we felt like we were at the end of our rope. Severe tantrums, meltdowns. Um, listening. Listening at all. I didn't know what was going on with my child. Nobody was there at the time to help me. He used a lot of nonverbal communication, as in grunting, pointing, very angry, very aggressive at times. It was very frustrating. Mental health issues do emerge in the zero to three population. A lot of individuals think that this is just a phase or it's a developmental stage that will go away. I think what we need to do is continue to raise awareness that this isn't a phase. A family will go to their doctor and say, I think my child's slow at this. And they're told, oh, they'll grow out of it. In months and maybe years are lost before that child shows up in kindergarten and the teacher who recognizes it right away calls for intervention. Well, years have been lost. Research says that if we don't get things more managed with a child before they've turned eight years old, there's a 50% chance that that child is going to have significant mental health issues further in life. I keep on working till I figure it out. I'm going to find a way. Early intervention is critical because it is the time in a child's life, in a person's life, where the brain develops the most. Every second for an infant, 700 neural connections are made. The brain gets set up and the areas that are used are the areas that grow stronger connections and that are further developed. We would like all children to be screened socially and emotionally. Um, we think it's an important way to um, catch those kids that might fall through the gaps otherwise. And then understanding that each child is unique and an individual, we can tailor our educational and mental health intervention programs appropriately. Child Guidance and Family Solutions uses both the Devereaux Early Childhood Assessment and the Ages and Stages Social Emotional Screening because there's a place for both of them. The ASQSE is a parent questionnaire that we send home twice a year. There's different questions like, does your child cry for more than 30 minutes at a time? Or is your child able to calm themselves down? And the parent will answer most of the time, rarely or never, or sometimes. And then they have a comment section for strengths, weaknesses, and concerns. It has a cutoff score on it so that we know if there's concerns with them or if they're in the average range for a preschool child. The reason that I believe in the DECA probably the most is because it tackles our kids on every level. So when we look at working with and screening children, we are screening every single child, which means universal. The DECA is a 38 item assessment and what it does is it kicks out a score for their initiative, their attachment, and their self-regulation. Those three areas have been proven to be the protective factors that kids have to have to be successful in kindergarten. The DECA in and of itself really gives us a nice little snapshot, not only as, as a group and individual classrooms and where those strengths and challenges are, but also with those individual children. It is harder to talk about the social emotional issues, to bring parents to the table, and the DECA is one of those tools that makes it easier. And then the support services that come with it definitely reinforce a teacher's toolkit. Once children are screened, parents and teachers can use songs, puzzles, and books, plus a lot of other fun activities to build their children's resiliency. All kids can benefit from interventions. It doesn't need to be a child that's having challenging behaviors. The DECA can tell us how we can make even the strongest child in the classroom even that much more strong. We've seen 93% of our children make an improvement on the DECA based on the pre-test and the post-test. We've been doing this programming since 2008 where we partner with child care centers and offering support and training. And since that time, we have reduced preschool expulsion by 98%. We've had centers that have um, expelled 13 plus children a year and then the following year with support they have expelled zero children. As a funder we're always looking for programs that are successful but we're looking beyond the anecdotal information and the stories and the smiling faces. We're looking for data that can be translated into information that can be translated into action. 
This program is one of the best for producing actionable data and acting upon it. And that's why United Way has been a strong funder of this since the beginning. We realized we could make the biggest impact as a community by investing in early childhood. You know, the research shows that for every dollar invested in early childhood, we get a $16 to $17 return. We're preventing early dropouts from school. We're preventing people from going more on the welfare system. We're keeping them out of the criminal justice system and trying to give them the tools to not only succeed in school, but to help prepare them to succeed in life. You know, we have programs in over 40 daycare centers. We hit over 350 teachers. I believe that we've done a really nice job in this community. I think that we set an example for other communities. If we could replicate the Summit Counting program throughout every community in Ohio and then eventually the nation, we wouldn't be racing to the top. We would be at the top. One thumb up, two thumbs up, point to yourself and say, I can do it. I can do it, I can do it, if I put my heart and my mind to it, I can do it. No matter what your role, whether it be pediatrician, preschool teacher, counselor, or parent, you will be transforming lives by screening and intervening early. Every day I learn from the staff of Child Guidance something new for my toolkit. They are an amazing resource. The way I hear the staff grow and develop, as well as the children, that to me is just sparkling. Colin's very appreciative and, and very much exposed to a totally different world than he lived previously. He acts like a normal child in a classroom setting now. Any tools I could get when it comes to raising my children, I will gladly accept because I only have one chance to do this and I want to make sure it's done correctly. When children come to school and are able to be successful young, that's a win for the children and the schools. Then parents and communities get a win. When children come to school successful, they can become productive citizens and then that's another win. And then the final win is when we have healthy, productive citizens, the whole society wins. So taking care of children early is a win-win-win.